Hi, and welcome to 11.5 Series Circuits. All right, this is the moment we've been waiting for. We've been building up all the different tools uh, in our tool chest, meaning all the different equations in electricity. And they all seem like separate concepts. Ohm's Law relates a few of them together. And now we can actually analyze some circuits. These circuits are all arranged in series, as you could tell, because it's one continuous loop. There's not multiple loops. And I do apologize. I did try to look into how to fixing this error, but it's going to be popping up throughout the video, and I'm just going to have to deal with it for now. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so series circuits. And let's look at what the relationships for series circuits look like in our reference table. So these are all the different things that we know now, all the different tools in our tool chest. And now we can use this is very important. This is the relationship for series circuits and the relationships for parallel circuits. And at first glance, they look pretty similar. But if you look at just where it says all the currents, and you could see what's different about those two things. Here, they're all equal to each other. For parallel circuits, which is tomorrow's lesson, uh, it's going to be different. There, You have to add all the currents together to get a total current which is similar to the voltage for series circuits. The voltage all adds up, and they're called voltage drops over each resistor. This 1, 2, 3 represents resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3. And the reason there's dot, dot, dot is because you could have two things in series, 3, 4, 5, etc. So this is the voltage drop across the first resistor plus the voltage drop across the second plus across the third, et cetera, equals this is the total voltage. All right, but for parallel circuits, all the voltages are equal to each other, which is very different. So you have to treat them differently. And for series circuits, luckily the resistances just add up. It's kind of what you would think it would be. If we have 10 ohms and 5 ohms and uh, 20 ohms, uh, these are three different resistors. What would you expect the total resistance to be? Well, you just add them together and you get, what is it, 35 ohms. That's the total resistance. Pretty straightforward, but for parallel, and we're going to do these, show you how this is a weird looking equation. And where does that equation come from? So parallel is very different from series. Um, I think series is kind of like more straightforward in what you would expect it to be. The one thing that gets tricky for people is the voltage drop, but that's kind of explained in the worksheet here. This paragraph talks about the voltage drop, uh, but I could show you with our simulator. So in this uh, circuit that I made beforehand, I have three resistors. Each of them has 10 ohms. So what would you expect the total resistance to be? I would expect it to be 10 plus 10 plus 10. There's 30 ohms of resistance in this circuit. And what's the voltage being supplied to the circuit? Well, it's 9 volts. And the idea here is that there's 9 volts of potential difference applied to the circuit. And to get the electrons to push through the resistors, the electrons want to go through the resistor here. But the resistor is providing some resistance. So how do you get the electrons to push through this resistance? You need that potential difference. So the, the there's 9 volts being supplied, and this resistor is going to use up some of that voltage. And this one res uses up some of the voltage. This one uses up some of the voltage. And that's what the voltage drop is. It's using up. The voltage is dropping. You're being supplied with 9. Well, how much voltage does this resistor use up? What is the voltage drop across the resistor? Remember, it's not from the one point to the same point. Okay, see how it's a voltage of zero if they're like right next to each other? It's across the resistor from one point to the other. This one uses three volts. We were supplied with nine volts. This one uses three volts. And then the next one, what would you expect? Three volts again, because they're equal resistance. So what's three plus three? Six. So what do you think this next one's gonna be using? to get to a total voltage of 9. 3 again. So 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 9 volts. That's the total voltage. And we could see that in the relationship. Here we had 9 volts total, and each one took up 3 volts. Well, do they have to be the same voltage? Like 3, 3, 3. Does it have to be the same? Why is it the same? 
in this circuit here, they're the same because the resistances are all the same. They're identical resistors, so it takes just as much energy to push the electrons through each one because they're all the same resistance. But what happens if I increase the resistance? What's going to happen to the voltage needed in order to push the electrons through at the same rate? We want the electrons to go through um, the same rate everywhere because that's what series is, right? So what's going to happen? If I increase the resistance, what would you expect this voltage to, to do? All right. Do you need more energy to push through the resistance or would you need less energy? You could think of it. Let's see. So let's increase the resistance. And as you could see, as I'm increasing the resistance, okay, let, let's make it double. Okay, now it's, I have 20 ohms resistance. This is now 4.5 volts. What happened to the voltage drop across the other resistors? Did that change? It did. It was 3. Now it's less. It's using up less of the total voltage. Well, what happened there? We didn't look at one thing yet. We didn't look at what happened to the current. Let's keep our eye on this guy now. All right, so that's 0.22 amps. And if I decrease the resistance back to 10 ohms for this one, what would you expect the current to do? As you can see, the current is increasing now because there's less resistance, which kind of makes sense, right? There's less sticks in the water. If it's like a beaver building a dam and the water is the current, the electrons. So if there's less sticks in the water, there's going to be more current. Less resistance, more current. All right, so that's kind of the relationship there. Let's see. So we have now it's back to three volts. This was back to three volts. Okay, the voltage drop are now equal, and you have 0.3 amps. And now to finish this discussion off before we do the thing, we'll just bring it all together with Ohm's law. If the resistance is 10 ohms, and that's got to stay the same. Let's let's keep let's change this one like we did before. Let's make it double. But remember this resistor stays at 10 ohms so when you do r is equal to v over i ohm's law r is equal to v over i you have to do the voltage divided by the current in order to get 10 and this 10 ohms is the thing that's going to stay constant in this scenario here so as we change this resistance it's going to change the current because there's more there's more resistance here so the current is going to decrease because there's more resistance in the circuit. And as the current decreases, the voltage drop is going to decrease for this because V divided by I has to equal R. And let's see what happens. So it's all interconnected. This is what, let's see. Ah, see how they're going down at the same rate? There's some rounding issues with all this stuff, but let's see. Oh, wow. Okay, so now we got 20, and I bet that this is like a rounded thing. See how it's 2.25, and this is 0.22. I bet there's a 5 after that in the thousandths place that's not shown. So that when you do the voltage divided by the current, you still get 10 ohms. Uh, okay, so that's the, again, voltage drop is just how much voltage is each thing using. And it's measured from, see how if I go from this whole scenario with one, two, three, it gives me the total voltage. And if I just put it here, it's the voltage drop across these two. Normally, we just do the voltage drop across each individual thing to make it easier. And we're going to use Ohm's law. V is equal to uh, I times R in order to calculate that voltage drop for each individual resistor. Okay, so nine minutes in, and let's do some problems. So it says, use the series circuit pictured to the right to answer questions A through E. What is the total voltage across the bulbs? So that's AKA, like, how much voltage is being supplied to the um, circuit. That's kind of what I just showed in that previous thing where I put the voltmeter on across the volts, like that, across the bulbs there. Then it says, what is the total resistance of the circuit? So you do R is equal to R1 plus R2. So this is 1 ohm plus 1 ohm. So that's equal to 2 ohms. And it says, what is the current in the circuit? So this is where some people might get tripped up. So we want to use I is equal to V over R. That is Ohm's law. 
but now you have a choice to make. Pretty straightforward with the voltage. We have six volts. There's only one choice for that. So we got to put six volts here. But what do you plug in for the resistance? Do you do one ohm or do you do two ohm? Well, if you just put one ohm over here, then you're going to get six amps of current. But that's neglecting one of the resistors. You can't just ignore that resistor in your equation. That's why we use the equivalent resistance, all right, 2 ohms, to find the total current in the circuit. And that's where you get the 3 amps from. So you can't just ignore a resistor, all right, and plug in 1 ohm. There's another ohm there. That's why we found the equivalent resistance in part B. Now it says, what is the voltage drop across each light bulb? And it says, remember that voltage drop is calculated by multiplying the current in the circuit by the resistance of a particular resistor. In this case, it's going to be the same. I could tell because the resistances are the same. So they're like dividing the voltage equally between them. And I'm going to predict that we get three volts each because three volts plus three volts is six volts. But let's use Ohm's law to prove that. So V is equal to I times R. And we'll do that for the first resistor. So this is like R1, and this is like R2. And then we could do the same thing, V2 equals I2 times R2. Okay, so we're looking for this. I1 is actually the same as I2, and we didn't talk about it in that little scenario there. So let's look at back at the here. But for series circuits, the current is going to be the same everywhere. Even if, and remember, I made this a uh, high, doubled the resistance, but the current is still the same. Why is that? Because of the way the wires are arranged. There's only one path for the electrons to go through it. So think of it like a one lane highway. If there's a one lane highway, everybody has to go at the same speed. If it's like a traffic jam, there's not multiple lanes where you could have different currents. There's only one lane for the current to flow through, so all the electrons have to be flowing at the same rate. Okay, so that's why we could actually do this. We don't need to separate I1 and I2 when we're talking about series circuits because it's all just the same current. It's all the same current. Uh, sorry. Okay, so the current is the same everywhere. It's super powerful information. We want to know what the current is when we're dealing with series circuits. Uh, and you should be very happy if you know what the current is because that tells you information for everything else. Same with voltage for parallel circuits. They're all equal to each other. So as soon as you know the voltage in one spot, you know the voltage everywhere else. Just like in series, if you know the series, we said the, the total current we knew. Well, you know the current in each resistor as well now. So that's powerful information. Okay, so now we got I, which is the same everywhere, 3 amps. The resistor of the resistance of R1 is 1 ohm. So our prediction was correct. This is 3 volts. Is it going to be the same? Yeah, you betcha, because the current is the same. And in this case, we had the same resistance. Each one was 1 ohm. So this is equal to 3 volts. Okay, part E says draw the path of the current in the diagram. And they're giving you a hint here. They're, re they're reminding you that the larger side of the battery symbol is the positive side. And the smaller side is the negative side. And we said by convention, just like when you do electric field lines, the current flows out of positive and into negative. It's where a positive charge would go just by convention, even though we know that the electrons are really the things that are moving. But that's the conventional current. Okay. Now, number two. Number two similar but now there's three resistors all right so it's kind of like working it through for you it says what is the total voltage across the bulbs still six volts the total voltage what is the total resistance so it's going to be one plus one plus one uh, i'll write it out here so the equivalent resistance is equal to three ohms uh okay and they basically call it that because why is it equivalent resistance right so here here we go Equivalent resistance just means if you take out all these different things and you want to replace it with just one resistor. So this is 10 ohms, 10 ohms, 10 ohms. Let's take two of them out. Actually, before I do that, it's important to note. So we're looking at 0.3 amps. So we want to take out the all the different 
resistors, replace it with one equivalent resistor that will still give you 0.3 amps. And if this is 10, 10, and 10, the equivalent resistance is 30. So you can see this is 0.9 amps because I didn't change the resistance yet. So the equivalent resistance is 30 ohms, 10 plus 10 plus 10. And then as you can see, it's equivalent because the current is the same. So that's all. It's technically total resistance, I guess. But you'll see when we do parallel circuits, it's not really like the sum the, of the resistances. Not always. It's the equivalent resistance. Now it says, what is the current in the circuit? So you just got to do I is equal to V over R. And now you got 6 volts divided by 3 ohms because that's the equivalent resistance and you get 2 amps. So again, we're not using each individual one because if we just did 1 ohm, then we're ignoring that the fact that there's two other resistors here slowing down the current. And if we're looking for the current, we better use the equivalent resistance because that's the total resistance. Now it says, what is the voltage drop across each light bulb? So we're going to do the same thing. V is equal to I times R. But we're going to do for resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3, using 2 amps each time like we found in part C. And the resistance for each one is, uh, it's all the same in this case, so uh, 1 ohm. So resistor 1 uses 2 volts of current, same as resistor, resistor 2, still 2 volts. 2 volts and 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6, so that gives us back to the total voltage. Um, okay, now it says draw the path. It's going to be the same thing clockwise. Out of positive into negative. It says what happens to the current in a series circuit as more light bulbs are added and why? So the current decreases because there is more resistance. So for number four, it says what happens to the brightness of each bulb in a series circuit as additional bulbs are added. So just like in number three where it says the current's decreasing because there's more resistance. Well, if you add more bulbs, there's also more resistance. So there's less current. Also, you have to split the voltage between more things. See how we went from uh, three volts when there was two bulbs to now you're sharing the voltage between more bulbs. Now there's only two volts. And what happened to the current? The current was three amps when there was two bulbs, but now it's only two amps. So the bulbs get actually dimmer because there's less current and there's less voltage across each bulb. And we could see that in our simulator. Here we have two bulbs and those yellow lines represent the brightness. So let's see the yellow lines get smaller as we add another bulb. And as you could see there, they're dimmer now because there's more bulbs, there's more resistance, the current slowed down, okay, and the voltage drop across each resistor is less than what it was before. Let's do this, let's take this out. So this is 0.3 and 3 volts, take that out. Now there's more voltage being supplied to each bulb and more current because there's less resistance in the circuit. Um, so that's why our houses aren't really wired in series because you would have really dim light bulbs everywhere. So they're actually wired in parallel. Number five says use the series circuit picture to the right to answer questions A through C. What is the total resistance? Again, six volts. Now it's going to be a little different. It says what is the current in the two ohm resistor? So you have to do a, a little bit of application of like the steps that we did before. First, we found the total resistance. So first we'll do the total resistance. So that's three ohms of resistance for the whole circuit. And now we could find the current for the whole circuit. I is equal to V over R um, because we have the six volts for the whole circuit, not for each individual resistor. And now we can know what the three ohms is. And this is going to be 2 amps. If you had done 6 volts divided by 2 ohms, you would get 3 amps. But that's wrong because you're ignoring this 1 ohm of resistance here. It's like it's not even there in this calculation. So sure, that would be 3 amps. But this 1 ohm is also slowing you down, which is why we use the equivalent resistance. And now we know the current not only through the 2 ohm resistor, but it's also 2 amps through the 1 ohm resistor because in series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. So that's one of the major points for series is that the current is the same everywhere. If you know it through one thing, 
you know, through everything else. Now it says, what is the voltage drop across each resistor? So now that we know the current, um, we could use that just like we did before. V is equal to IR. So the one ohm resistor uses two volts. And what would you expect the two ohm resistor to be? Would it be the same like it has been? Before they were all equal resistances. Now this is twice as much resistance, two ohms, and you get four volts. And that makes sense because two plus four brings you back to the total voltage six. So the voltage drop across each bulb has to add to equal the total voltage. And that relationship is shown in your uh, reference table. So hopefully at this point, the voltage drop thing is making a little bit more sense. And we see that the voltage drop across each bulb gives you the total voltage. Before it was uh, two volts plus four volts is equal to six volts. So that's the application of that relationship. Okay, number six says use the series circuit pictured to the right to answer questions A through E. All right, so now we have uh, same resistances again. They're like two equal resistors, but now we have two batteries. That's what that's showing. So it says what's the total voltage of the circuit? Uh, you could also apply that relationship when it's in series. You could do like this. So the total voltage is equal to this is like voltage supplied now. So this is 12 volts. Not really a voltage drop, but it's the same. You just add them together, so it's 12 volts. Uh, what is the total resistance in the circuit? So this is, again, the REQ thing. Pretty straightforward for series circuits. All right, parallel, the equivalent resistance, total resistance is going to be a little bit different, okay? So don't get too used to it being so easy. Now it says, what is the current in the circuit? So I is equal to V over R. And in part A, we found the total voltage. And in part B, we found the total resistance, the equivalent resistance. So 12 divided by 4. You want to use like the, the total and the total. Uh, if we knew the current through this, that's the current through that. Or actually, if they told you what the voltage drop through this one was, then you could use this resistance and that voltage drop to calculate the current. You'd get the same thing. Um, but Let's use the stuff that we found in part A and B. So then you get three amps of resistance. And now that we know the current, we know the current everywhere. And we could do the voltage drop across each light bulb is the same thing. V is equal to IR. Okay, so V1 is equal to I times R. So that's six volts. And I bet it's the same because they're the same uh, resistance. So V2 is equal to the same current, definitely, because it's a series circuit. Current is the same everywhere. And this happens to be the same resistance. So that's also 6 volts. And what's 6 plus 6? 12. And that's the total voltage again. Draw the path. They seem like they're all like that. Okay. Now it says use the series circuit picture to the right to answer A through C. Consider each resistor um, equal to all others. So that's kind of the scenario up above where the resistance was equal. Um, so let's see. What is the resistance of each resistor? They're telling you the current now. And we could figure out the total voltage. So voltage is equal to 1.5 plus 1.5. 3 volts. And the current through the whole circuit is 0 0.5 amps. So I could figure out the equivalent resistance. R is equal to V over I. So 3 divided by a half is equal to 6 ohms. That's like the total, the equivalent. And now we got it. This is a two-stepper. You could do R EQ is equal to R plus R plus R. Remember it said consider each resistor equal. So that's why I didn't do R1 plus R2 plus R3 because they're all equal to each other. So now we could do, we could do like combine like terms. So R plus R plus R, that's 3R. And we know that this is, the equivalent resistance is 6. So each resistor is equal to 6 divided by 3, 2 ohms. Oops, not amps, 2 ohms. And you might have been able to figure that out as soon as you realized okay the equivalent resistance is six ohms i got three equal things here what's six divided by three equally and that's literally what we did we did six divided by three 
Okay, so I'm just using the math to do what you might have been able to figure out in your head. Um, so the resistance for each one is 2 ohms, not 6 ohms. So we'll write it like that, R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals 2 ohms, okay, and the total is 6. So now it says what is the voltage drop across each resistor. So we could do uh, V is equal to I times R for the first one. It's actually going to be the same, right? So the voltage drop across this one, and it's 0.5 amps times each individual one is 2 ohms. So each individual resistor uses one volt of potential difference. So this is one volt, this is one volt, and this is one volt. And what's one plus one plus one? That's three volts. So the voltage is the same for each thing only because the resistance is the same. So in this case, that's true. On the diagram, okay, show the amount of voltage in the circuit before and after each resistor. So the current is going this way. And at this point, it has six, uh, sorry, three volts being supplied, 1.5 plus 1.5. This one uses one volt. So now what's three minus one? There's two volts here. And what's two minus one? One. So there's one volt left over here. And now there's actually zero volts left over and the current comes to the battery and the battery pushes you back up to a uh, potential of three volts. So that's kind of the, the situation with the voltage in series circuits. It says use the series circuit. Okay, what is the total resistance of the circuit? So again, we got to do REQ. You just add them all together and you get six ohms. Okay, now it says what is the current in the 3 ohm resistor? Well, you're just going to find the current for the total. This is like the total current V total divided by REQ. They tell you the total voltage is 9 volts divided by 6 ohms of like equivalent total resistance. And you get, uh, what is that, 3 halves. So 1.5 uh, amps. That's for the total circuit. Uh, but it's the same everywhere. So in the 3 ohm resistor, it's 1.5 amps. In the 2 ohm resistor, it's 1.5 amps. And in the 1 ohm resistor, it's still 1.5 amps. So there you go. Now it says, what is the voltage drop across each resistor? So this is going to be a little bit different, but we know that the voltage drop across each one, when you add them all together, should be equal to 9. But now that they're all different resistances, it's kind of like, uh, you know, ratio almost. But... The Ohm's law will help you do that. So V1 equals I, which is the same everywhere, times R1. So the 1.5 times 2. So we'll do the first one. So that's equal to 3 volts. And then I2, oops, sorry, V2 equals I times R2. So this is 1.5 times three ohms and three times 1.5 is 4.5 volts okay and then we could do the same thing v3 equals i times r3 so this is 1.5 times one ohm and this is equal to 1.5 volts and now let's see, is 3 plus, what's 3 plus 1.5? 4.5. And what's 4.5 plus 4.5? 9. So it's the same thing, okay? It adds up to the total voltage. It says, what is the sum of the voltage drops across the three resistors? What do you notice about the sum? Uh, it's equal to the total voltage. Okay, number nine, and then number 10. Number 10 is a little tricky. It's a little different from the other ones, but, you know, that's what analyzing circuits is all about. So let's see. It says, how much current would be measured if each in each circuit if each light bulb has a resistance of 6 ohms? So these are just switches, in case you were confused by that. Those are switches. And each bulb is going to be 6 ohms. So what is the current? Well, I is equal to V over R. We could do it in one shot if you want. If you want to be fancy. V over R EQ. So this is the total. 
the total voltage for the first situation is 6 volts divided by, and this is 6 ohms plus 6 ohms. So this is equal to 0 0.5 amps. And that's for number 1, so 0 0.5 amps. And then for number 2, it would be the same thing. But now the total voltage, there's two batteries here. All right, so it's going to be 6 volts plus 6 volts. And there's also still two bulbs. So any, they're saying each bulb is 6 ohms. So 6 ohms plus 6 ohms, and that's equal to 1 amp. Okay, so because there's twice the voltage, you get twice the current. It's a direct relationship. Now it says how much current would be measured in, in each circuit if each light bulb had a resistance of 12 ohms. So if we're doubling the resistance from 6 to 12, there's more resistance, what would you expect to happen to the current? If there's more resistance, does the current go up or down? So if there's more resistance, the current should go down. And if it was 0.5 amps, I would imagine that it's going to be 0.25. But let's figure it out. So in the first scenario, we just have the one battery. And now each bulb is 12 plus 12. So 6 over 24, that's going to be 0 0.25 amps. And we could do the same thing for the second one. So now we still have the same voltage. But now, again, it's 12 ohms plus 12 ohms. So you got 12 over 24. And it's still going to be half as great. It was 1 amp before, now it's 0.5 amps. The resistance increased from 12 to 24, but the resistance decreased. Sorry, the current decreased. So if the resistance increased, then the current decreased. It's an inverse relationship because I is equal to V over R. Inverse. Direct. Now it says, what happens to the amount of current in a series circuit as the number of batteries increases? Okay, so if the number of batteries increases, that means the voltage is going to increase. And they're asking about the current. So what is the relationship between voltage and current? So this is a direct relationship. And if the voltage increases, the number of batteries, batteries increases, the current increases. And is that what happened here? We had 6 volts and 0.5 amps. And then we had 12 volts and 1 amp. So it went from 0.5 to 1. And this went from uh, 0.25. So in both scenarios, if you double the voltage, the current also doubles. It's a direct relationship. Okay, now number 10. Number 10 is tricky because they tell you some of the resistances, but not this one. So you can't do the same steps as we did before. It says the diagram to the right shows a circuit with three resistors. What is the resistance of R3? A lot of times, kiddos try to do REQ is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And then they're trying to plug in stuff, but you actually don't know what the equivalent resistance is, at first, at least. But you know, so what is R3? We have two unknowns here. And then they give up and go home. Uh, or you guys are probably already at home. Uh, so how, what are we going to do? Well, is there any way we could find what the equivalent resistance is? Let's see what else they tell us. They also tell you the voltage is equal to 24 volts and they tell you the current is equal to 2 amps so to do this one first you have to do the equivalent resistance using ohm's law so we could do r is equal to v over i for like the total stuff and the equivalent resistance so req is equal to 24 volts divided by 2 amps, so that's equal to 12 ohms, and 12 ohms, now we could plug in over here for, I'm going to not do ohms, 
makes it a little bit messy when you got all the units in there sometimes for me. I like it a little bit cleaner. So 6 plus 4 is 10. Uh, R3. So 12 minus 10. What's 12 minus 10? 2 ohms. Okay. So we got 2 ohms here. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. Uh, and then it doesn't make sense yet. R is equal to V over I. 24 divided by 2. That's also 12. So this is just like getting your feet wet a little bit with circuit analysis. Um, seeing how everything is all related to each other. The I, th I think it's fun. Once you get used to like following the rules. for It's a puzzle. And you have to know what the basic rules for the puzzle are. And then it gets even trickier when we do parallel. So if you're like trying to solve a puzzle like that last one, you have one set of rules for series and one set of rules for parallel. And as you saw, it could get tricky. It's like, oh, I forgot they gave me the total voltage and the total resistance. So what we're going to lead to is this idea of a VERP table for voltage, current, resistance, and power. And it's basically a way that you could do your guess method, which is what I teach my kiddos for how to be organized and write down your information. But this would be like if you had three resistors, you could write down the voltage drop across each resistor, the current through each one, the resistance. So let's say this was one ohm, one ohm, and even if this was two ohms, well, the total would be equal to four ohms here. And let's say they tell you the, the voltage is four volts. Then you know, okay, I is equal to V over R, so that's one amp, and it's like, ooh, it's a series circuit. So if it's a series circuit, I know the current's super important because it tells me everything. So as soon as you fill in this this like area here, then you could fill in everything else for the current because the current's the same everywhere in series. And now to find the voltage drop, V is equal to I times R. So in this case, it's super easy, one times one, right? So V is equal to one volt. Uh, one volt and then I times R one times two is two volts and the way you check yourself for series one volt plus one volt plus two volts is equal to the total four volts so that's like a way to check to make sure you do it correctly and you could also do power is equal to V times I so one times one is one watt one watt and V times I two times one amp is two watts the, so the total power dissipated by the circuit that I just made up off the top of the dome would be 4 watts. And that circuit would look like this. Where this voltage is 4 volts, 1 ohm, 1 ohm, 2 ohms. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Uh, I wanted to give you a sneak peek because I know that the worksheet might be a little bit weird because the problems are so simple. But it really it was all about just figuring out what the relationships are. What are the rules for analyzing this puzzle? And then we'll get, we'll get into more complicated stuff. Don't worry about it. All right, have a great day.